There's an amazing story in the Bible told in the book of Matthew in the Christian tradition, which puzzled me greatly as a growing up Baptist believer, and it still troubles me today. Jesus was traveling with others when they came upon a fig tree. Do you recognize this one? So they're walking around, they they found a fig, fig tree, which bore only leaves, no fruit. Jesus was so upset by the sight of this fruitless tree that he zapped it. He killed the tree. Then he said to his followers, if you have faith and do not doubt, not only can you kill off fig trees, I'm paraphrasing, (laughs) you can also move a mountain and cast the mountain into the sea. And then he said, all things whatsoever you ask in prayer, believing you shall receive. A few things bother me about this. One, why didn't he just have the tree bear fruit? <laughs> and what do you mean all things? If I pray for Cadillac, will I get the Cadillac? By the way, for 108 years of praying, God refused to let the Cubs win. <laughs> and then this young whippersnapper comes along, and the youth and Astros, he answered his prayer. I was a great prayer growing up. I believed in prayer and I prayed a lot. So when I would visit my Aunt Ruth, my Aunt Ruth had my cousins, you know, children, and then they were cousins for me. She was a devout Episcopalian, which means that she was an Episcopalian because her husband went to the Episcopal Church. She grew up Methodist, and she didn't like the idea of rote prayer. You know, the the Episcopal Palians, they use a prayer book, and every prayer, prayer of thanks, prayer, it's in there, you read it. So she would announce to her kids, my cousins, now you watch. Charlie is going to give the blessing for the meal, and he's going to do it extemporaneously. (laughs) And I was the shyest kid in the world. And really, she didn't never consulted me ahead of time. But anyway, I I got through it, because I was really good at praying. (laughs) No rote prayer for me. I was taught... The road prayer is what Catholics do when they do Hail Marys. It's what ba- Baptists, by the way, I was taught, as, but, but the Baptists didn't recognize the fact that every Sunday we would recite the Lord's Prayer, road prayer. And then what I, when I said, we went to, went to school every morning, the Lord's Prayer, by road. They never connected the dots. I remember the first time I heard radio evangelist Jimmy Swaggart. I don't know if you remember him. He, not if, well, he's still around. Okay, you remember him. Okay. He told a story. I, I listened to this on the radio. I was, he was, this is the story. He said, I was driving my old beat-up Plymouth car in the middle of nowhere, and it broke down. He prayed, he said, in the great mechanic in the sky, his holy God miraculously healed his car. <laughs> oh, yes, he said, send your money to me now. Praise God. If that isn't enough to spoil you with prayer for prayer, I don't know what could do that. It it really, it really rocked me. It was not until my young adulthood that I came to to terms with two facts I had been avoiding admitting to myself my entire life. I was probably about 30-something. I could not recall any answered prayer, which must have meant to me that I either lacked faith or my belief was insufficient, according to Matthew, that if you have faith, I'll answer your prayers, or there's no one listening to my prayers. So, as a result of that and some other things, I became an ardent ardent atheist, and I began to feel that those people who had persisted in prayer were either self-deluding or at least misinformed. I graduated seminary as a Unitarian University minister with that belief. I suspect the majority of you here today have had early life experiences with prayer similar to mine, and that many of you here today do not pray in the traditional sense. And and many of you may be skeptical of prayer. So you may ask, why do I want to talk about prayer? Because I know most of you come to church for spiritual insight, 
Many of you want to have a spiritual dimension in your life. And also, I believe in prayer. Prayer anchors my spiritual life. I pray regularly. What I had to do in order to reclaim prayer in my life was to reframe what prayer is. I had to redefine the meaning of prayer for myself, to cast off the old ways and put on the new. By the way, that's from the Bible too. Cast off the old ways, put on the new. What I've said, what I've had to do in order to reclaim prayer in my life was to reframe what it is. From this point on on my measure, I ask you to put out of your mind everything you have thought about prayer to be up to this point. Although I must, I must, I would imagine that many of you have already reached where I'm at right now, but if you haven't, stay with me. What began to change my mind was an event one Sunday in my first church. It was in Lexington, Kentucky, my first church. When a person got up in front of our church during joys and concerns and sadly announced that a beloved member, a young man about 30 years old, had been diagnosed with a brain tumor and he was terminally ill. The person making the announcements then, without consulting me first, said, and anybody that wants to after the service, go into Charlie's office and he'll lead you in prayer for Charlie. I had 45 minutes to figure out what to do with this. And I did, I led 40 people, mostly agnostics, humanists, atheists, in prayer. How did I pray? I'll tell you later on in my message, I'm going to, at the end of my message, message, I'm gonna do a prayer, and I'll illustrate. Rabbi Kushner, Rabbi Kushner, who was the author of Why Do Bad Things Happen to Good People? I'm going to write a book, Why Do Good Things Happen to Bad People? <laughs> the left half of the brain, the left half of the brain controls, I'm quoting Rabbi Kushner, the left half of the brain controls linear, intellectual, rational processes, processes. That's, by the way, my left side of the brain is very active. The right side controls aesthetic, emotional responses. Even though prayers use words, prayers are a right brain aesthetic rather than a left brain intellectual one. Prayer has the purpose of keeping, this is, I love this, this is Kushner. Prayer has the purpose of keeping your left brain busy so the right brain can soar without embarrassment. But I've learned, to, I learned, I've learned meditation, and that's what meditation is. You, you shut down your, your crazy mind. Asking what a prayer means is like asking what a flower means. What does a symphony mean? It just sort of rolls over you. It has emotional impact. A speech therapist reinforced this view of prayer, saying... My job, this is a speech therapist now, I'm quoting him. My job is to work with stroke patients who have lost the power of speech because of cerebral vascular accident. I have a client who had a stroke. He cannot speak. He cannot say hello. He cannot tell you his name. He can recite the entire Hebrew service by heart because that, that is located in a different part of the brain than the powers of speech. Prayer is an aesthetic event, poetry. Doesn't have to be formal. You don't have to do what I did as a kid. You don't have to sit down and, you know. Any utterance that is spiritual in nature is prayer. A poem, a song, a mantra, a cry from the depths. A spontaneous thanksgiving, a blessing. Those are all prayers. My favorite prayer of all time was by the poet E. e. Cummings. And this is the prayer. I am thankful most for this amazing day, for the leaping greenly spirits of trees in a blue true dream of sky. That's a prayer. I use it at Thanksgiving for my own, in my own use. Prayer is relationship which flows out of love. 
by reaching out beyond ourselves. That's what you're doing when you're praying. You're reaching out beyond yourself. It could be to something indescribable and nameless. It could be the universe at large. It does not have to be directed to any being. As uh, some people like to say, you use pray to whom it may concern. <laughs> prayer is to express your deepest being. You are, you are your prayer. The Sufi reading earlier, what you do, what you, what you are is your prayer. To pronounce your own unique word is to pray the holiest of prayers. So spiritual, I, def, I define spirituality as making connections. Making connections within yourself, making connections with other people, and making connections with a wider universe. You might call it God, you might call it the spirit of life, but making those kind of connections. When we pray, we are making connections. That's what prayer is. Albert Einstein, my favorite scientist, he said, a human being is a part of the whole called by us universe. One experiences the self One's thoughts and feelings are something separated from the rest, a kind of optical delusion of consciousness. This delusion of being separate is a kind of prison for us. Our task is to free ourselves from this prison by widening our circle of compassion to embrace all living creatures in the whole of nature in its beauty, the interdependent web of all existence. Who would have thought the greatest scientist of all time would be the one who, in my opinion, best described how to pray? To paraphrase what he said, you feel separate, but you are not. You are connected to all of life. You can escape this delusion and realize your connection to all of life. And you can do that in prayer, making the connection. To pray, you need only to meditate on your connectedness and then take it from there. When I, when I pray, I empty my mind, and then if I want to, I, I will empty, I'll meditate on how I'm connected, and then I'll go from there. By the very act of prayer, we are lifted outside of our narrow selves. We're made open, and we're made receptive. Prayer breaks us out of separate, separation and isolation and connects us with the web of all existence. Hildegard of Bingen, Christian mystic, describe prayer this way. Now li listen to how she's a Christian mystic, very celebrated. If you're a Roman Catholic, you, you, you may well use a lot of her works to meditate with. Here's what she said. Prayer is breathing in and breathing out the one breath of the universe. Does that sound Buddhist? Om. In Jewish tradition, Prayer is, coming in, in, prayer is coming into the stream of the holy, a felt presence of oneness, connecting. So if, you, if you're a Jew, when you pray, you're connecting with the stream of the holy. What we need is relationship with something that lies in our deepest core and is also the mystery beyond ourselves. Let us now look at the prayer Jesus taught. And the way I want to do this is there was a UU minister uh, named Forrest Church. He was a minister in New York City. He was the son of Frank Church, and many of you remember Frank Church was a very progressive senator. So Forrest then became a minister, a UU minister, and he was in a taxi, New York City now, in a taxi. And I guess he told the cab driver, he was a minister because he didn't dress, you know, like with collar or anything like that, but, but the cab driver knew he was a minister. So he, here's what he said. This is the cab driver. I don't know about you, but I have trouble with the Lord's Prayer. I believe in God, but the Lord's Prayer, I mean, since I say it every night I go to bed, I had to improve on it. <laughs> if you've been in New York, you don't understand this. <laughs> What's this Our Father business? If God is a man, we're finished. And how about who art in heaven? Wait a minute, all of us are here. So what I say is this, spirit of life who art with and among us. Not up there, here. 
And then I dropped a bit about the hallowed name because that doesn't mean anything to me. <laughs> thy kingdom come, thy will be done, the same problem. I say, I say, be with us as we would be with you. Which, by the way, I think is what Jesus meant. When he was talking about the kingdom, he was, it's here. But anyway, the cab driver makes it more explicit. Be with us as we would be with you. Then give us this day our daily bread. That didn't make sense to me until I heard a sermon once. I didn't like the preacher, but it was a good sermon. <laughs> it got me thinking. We're not talking about hamburgers here. We're talking about spiritual food, the stuff that makes us human. So I left that in. <laughs> as for forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, just talk to my girlfriend. <laughs> I had to leave that in. But this lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil business. Give me a break. What's the deal? We ask God not to lead us into temptation. And then, when bad things happen, even when we've done good, blame God for it. That's ridiculous. So I dropped that out. <laughs> Which leaves only none is the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I have no problem with that, but it doesn't really do much for me. So I say instead, thank you for the blessing of life. I may... I pray I may be worthy of it. So this is, this is the taxi cab driver's prayer. Spirit, who is, who is with us and among us, be with us as we would be with you. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Thank you for the blessing of life. I pray I may be worthy of it. What I suggest is that the prayer taught by Jesus gives us a framework for prayer. I don't think we're meant to recite the prayer word for word. I think it's a framework, and it gives us an idea of the kinds of things that we should include in a prayer, like the taxi cab driver did. So when I pray, I begin by acknowledging a felt presence beyond the self-connection, beyond myself, connection to the universe, meditation, Emptying is the same thing. You, you, feel, you empty yourself and then feel the presence. Ask to be able to be satisfied with those things I have and for those, and that though be, I ask to be satisfied with those things I have and for that to be sufficient without worrying about what comes next. Be fully present. Admit the wrongs I have committed. Vow to forgive others. Vow to seek forgiveness. Give thanks. Vow to be worthy. That, that's the structure that, that Jesus gave his disciples. In the, but I don't think Jesus ever attended it. Matter of fact, Jesus said in another place in the Bible, you can tell I was a Baptist. Only hypocrites pray in the public. When you pray, go in your closet and pray. Jesus said that. So why do people want to public pray in school? I don't know. For me, a prayer is a form of meditation, a self-guided, self-guided meditation. The first thing is to center myself by finding a quiet spot and focusing on my breathing and emptying my mind of extraneous thoughts. There are many types of prayer. For example, if I want to pray for a person who is ill, I visualize that person. This is what I did in Lexington, Kentucky when, when, the, when, the, uh, when, when my congregant was dying of, dying of cancer and, and so we went into my office to pray for him. So what I did, I, I helped people visualize who Charlie was Visualize the illness and then generate loving thoughts and visualize sending those thoughts to, to Charlie using what we call white light, the white light of the universe, the lights of all the suns of the universe. So you, visual, you visualize the person who's ill, you visualize his illness, and then you visualize healing thoughts and you send them to him. That's what we did. And by the way, Charlie told me later when I, when I visited him that he... He felt something during that time that we were praying for him. If I want to forgive someone who has harmed me, I visualize that person and I send that person loving thoughts. I remember that, I remember that person's inherent worth and dignity. And I think kindly of that person. This releases me from anger and from dwelling on the hurt. If you hold on to hurt, you're only harming yourself. If I want to pray for peace, I visualize what that would look like in my life and in my community. 
Then I offer those thoughts by sending them out into the universe. Once you get lots of practice, you can pray even in the midst of the clamor of life, even when you are not in a quiet place. Remember the, Repub- the uh, biblical injunction to pray without ceasing? It doesn't mean to seek out a quiet, it means right, right now, make your life a prayer. I take that to mean I can pray any time, any place, by making my attitude one of centered presence and visualizing that which I came, wish to pray for. This is, this is what you do when you, when you do uh, visualiz- meditative visualization. When I tell someone I'll pray for them, I'm telling them I will generate positive healing thoughts and send them along with white light to that person. It works. At the least, it works for me because when I'm doing this, it helps me find serenity in the place of hurt. If I'm, if I'm mourning my friend and I, can, and I can generate white light for this person, then that makes me feel better. So it works at least that way. So I'm going to lead us in prayer, and um, after the prayer, we'll have a minute of med- meditation, silent meditation, and then remain seated and sing hymn number 391. Let us come together now in the spirit of prayer and meditation. Let us begin by centering. If it helps, close your eyes, sit comfortably, breathe in and out slowly and deeply. Focus your attention on your breath. Let us acknowledge our connectedness in the web of life. Invite into our lives the spirit of life which infuses all life, human, animals, and plants. Our lives are filled with blessings sufficient for this day. Let us not be worried for tomorrow. Visualize people you have wronged. Vow to seek forgiveness. Visualize people who have wronged you. Vow to forgive them. That's what Yom Kippur was about very recently. Give thanks for the many blessings in your life, for your abundance. May we be worthy. Pray for the aged and infirm, the widowed and the homeless, and for those sick and suffering. Send those people loving thoughts. Pray for the poor and the oppressed the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, for all remember, for all who remember and care for them, the people who care for these people. Pray for deliverance from danger, from violence, oppression, and degradation. And let us commend ourselves and one another in all our lives to justice and peace through love. Let us now remain together for a time of silent prayer and meditation. <clears throat> 